Okay, ultimately, my goal is to find the equation of the tangent line that is passing through this point on the given curve. I'm going to set up my chart for part A here on your problem a little bit differently so that I can make a connection for you to the graphing calculator and make this a more efficient process for you. How I'm going to set up my chart. I'm going to have my X column, kind of like I was explaining before. I'm going to have my Y column, just to be consistent. And then I'm going to have my slope column. Now, when you look in your packet how that problem is set up, you don't have to worry about the Y column. You're given the X values, right? We're going to hammer in these X values, and we're going to record results for the slope part. So you just really need to worry about what we're getting back over here. So X values that are given on this problem. We're going to start at 2, apparently. Go to 1.5, 1.1, 1.01, 1 .1, and 1.001. Now that chart continues in the packet. Continues to 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.9, and so on. Understand why we're giving you those values. Look at the original point in question here. Right, the original point in question, x is 1. So notice these values. You start at 2, you work your way closer to 1. The rest of that chart, you start at 0, you work your way closer to 1. You're supposed to see a pattern then with the slopes you're coming up with. Now, as we try to fill in this chart, I want to go back to something. What we explored back here in finding these slopes by hand, notice there was some consistency in what we did. These slopes off to the side. We were always subtracting back to the original point in question, right? And what was changing for us were the x values. So if I wanted to introduce some variables here, I probably should put some x's down here in a slope formula I could use, right? If my goal is to come up with some formula to make this more efficient, I've got to put some variables somewhere. So down here, I should have some x's. Over here, these values, well, that can just connect to the original point. Now, what about this top value? Because this top value is always changing, right? But that top value is always changing because of what I'm inputting down here. And how am I getting these top values? I'm just plugging back into the original function, right? So let me summarize over here a formula. If I want to find these slopes, to find these slopes, I could take what the original function is, in this case, the original function for us is this 1 plus x plus x squared. I could subtract the y value at the point in question. The y value at the point in question is 3. I could divide that by x, because that's always changing, minus the x value at the point in question, which on this one is 1. Every time I could do something like this if I'm trying to explore slopes of secant lines. The only thing that will change will be the y and the x here because the points will change. Now how can I use my calculator to save some time? Let's go to the calculator. And make sure we're set up and ready to go here. Okay, looks like we might be working. Great. Oh, no, nope, we're not working. So we should be working now. If I go to y equals, here's what I'm going to put in. I'm going to put my function in for y sub 1. So 1 plus x plus x squared. Every time we do one of these problems, y sub 1, that's the function. Okay, now I'm going to go down here. I'm going to enter. And... Since I have this formula now for finding the slope, right, this f of x minus 3 over x minus 1, my f of x is this function up here in y sub 1. So a nice little shortcut I can use to bring that information down. Check this out. Go to the variables key, which is under the arrows here. If you go to the variables key, an arrow over at the top where it says y variables, first item on there is function, which, hey, that's what we want, right? So hit enter. You get all these y sub numbers. 
you want y sub 1 to be called down. All right? So if this is the formula I'm going to use, where I got my function minus my y value at my point over x minus my x value at my point, understand I've got this quantity over this quantity. Let's go back now to the y equals screen. Let's throw some parentheses in here. This represents the top part of this formula. So the function goes in place first. You've got to call down y sub 1. So reviewing the steps again, I go to variables, scroll over to y variables. Okay, under y variables was function, so I hit enter. I want to call down y sub 1, so hit enter again. And voila, whatever you entered in the line up here at the top gets called down. You might be wondering right now, why do I have to go through all those steps? Because what I have up here is not that hard to enter down here. I get that. But as functions get more complicated, you got more grouping symbols, it's just a nice option to have. So you take y sub 1, you subtract then 3, right? Following my formula. Close the parentheses for the quantity on top. And now divide, and this is a step sometimes we forget, so divide, parentheses now on the bottom. Completing the formula, you have x minus 1. Close the parentheses. All right, we're almost ready now to input some values and complete this table. The next thing we have to check, hit second window, because that's the table setup. If we're going to complete this table and use our calculator, we need to make sure that the independent variable is on ask. So I go over to ask, highlight that, hit enter. That was second window for the table setup. Independent variable has to be on ask. Now we're going to go to the table, so second graph. All right, there's my table. If your table's not blank, that's okay. Whatever's over here for x, we can now input values over. So the x values that I want to take from this chart, what were they? We're starting at 2, right? 1.5, 1.1, and so on. So I'm going to enter 2 in. 2, enter. I'm going to enter 1.5 in. 1.1. And then however far we're going with this one. So 1.01, 1.001. That completes my table I got on the board here, half the chart that you guys have in your packet, right? If you look at the values you're getting back, for all of these x values, this column is telling me the y values at each of those ordered pairs, okay? This column was y sub 2, that's my slope formula. So what you want to record, what you're most interested in exploring is that last column. Right again, this stuff right here, this is okay. That's nice to know. Sometimes we care about that on these problems. But you want your slopes. So I'm going to take my slopes. I'm going to input those in. Uh, with my slopes, I'm starting at 4. And then what was it? 3.5, right? 3.1, 3.01, 3.001. That goes into your chart. Pretty simple if you've got this formula, right? Now you guys can go back because your chart continues. You know, I can go back up to the top here. I don't have to clear this out. Just enter the values over what you have there. You can enter 0 in now, right? And 0 0.5. And 0 0.9. And 0 0.99. And so on. Oh, I need one more. Whoops. Oh, it's frozen. That's why it's doing that. Does that work? There we go. Whoops. There we go. So these returning values right here, that completes your chart. So the x values we gave you to play with, we got values starting at 2, working their way back to 1, basically approaching from the right side. We got values starting at 0, working their way to 1, approaching from the left side. Look at the pattern that these numbers are taking. Either way you approach, you get closer to what number overall? Three. 
So the slope of this tangent line must be 3. For part B, we answer 3. Went to all that work. Might as well emphasize my point there. So we explored the slopes. We got the slope of the tangent line for part C. We write the equation of the tangent line. Using point slope form, that equation would be y minus the y value at the point in question, the y value is 3, equals the slope we found of 3 times the quantity x minus the x value at the point in question, which was 1. There's your equation for your tangent line. 